What's up guys, you are on the air and off the books with Beth Ann and Samantha, and today we are going to be talking about book two of the Fallen Gods series, which is called Badum Sunbringer by Hannah Kaner. <laughs> Sorry if I cough through this a little bit because I am battling yes. all the illness, um, but... This I've, was supposed to go up um, a couple weeks ago, but we've both been sick. It's been it's, going around real, real bad, unfortunately. And uh, we're very thankful for the patience of everyone involved so yes. that we could recuperate, be off for a millennia. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you, Jessica so, Lyons, um, yes, Harper Voyager. Hannah yes. herself. Um because we've been very much gifted with some beautiful copies, e-copies, manuscript, and an ARC, uh, or a finished paperback copy yeah. of Sunbringer, um, and it, they're stunning. If you haven't seen the artwork of these covers, this is definitely something that you need on your shelves, like just to like face, you know how they like face out all of the, um, like, you know, on Instagram, I was oh, like, I'm trying to be like... Where you put it on your shelf and yeah, you face and the you cover face it out. out and yeah. you put the cool like candles and swords in front of it. And like, you yeah. do these like little displays on your shelves and stuff. That's which, what you need to do. Like my shelf at home is full of kids toys. <laughs> 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 because I have a child. <laughs> but if I was, you know, in my like Beauty and the Beast bougie era, then I would a thousand percent like have these displayed. I'm just very like already in anticipation of like what that third cover is going to be like. I think it's going to be purple. You think it's going to be purple? Yeah. Ooh. I I just keep it just keeps popping into my head purple. I was thinking it might it might have been green or something. Or it See, could be red like fire. Sunbringer's kind of green. So It's like a, yeah, it's like a sea like blue green yeah. beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's just stunning. It's just stunning. The artist who they um got for this particular um, you can find them actually on Instagram um, and see a lot of their like art pieces. You can get, um, I think you can go on and you can order even the full prints of the original artworks for Sunbringer and Godkiller, um, which they are just, and all their other artwork on there as well are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Um, so if you didn't know, this is book two of the Fallen God series, like we just said. And you have to tune into the other episode where we actually yes. get to interview Hannah herself um, for this debut book that she did. It's going to be a trilogy. And um, it's essentially about um, a handful of adventurers, um, a god killer, a fallen knight, a young girl finding herself, and then her attachment to a god of white lies. And... The beginning of it, it's a very epic travel story when you yeah. get through God Killer. You're going on this epic adventure to try to figure out why these t this young girl and this god are joined together and he has no shrine. And so Kissin, an unlikely hero, essentially, um, who goes and kills gods for a living, who was wronged by the gods, takes a liking, essentially, in found family to this young girl, and they go on this mission to be able to try to figure out what's going on because she sees a little bit I think she sees a little bit of herself in um this this young lady Inara so we get to the big the final battle the big bits inside of God Killer which I don't really want you guys to be spoiled of Sunbringer and God Killer so yeah. if you haven't read God Killer then be you know, just know that when we get into Sunbringer, obviously Hannah does a really good job of, like, jumping into Sunbringer, picking that book right back up immediately where we left off, yes. which was great because of the cliffhanger, literally, <laughs> in God Killer. Right. So, oh, it's fantastic. We should, do you want to do the synopsis for this yes. particular? Okay. Just okay. remember, this is the second book of a series. We've Sunbringer. warned you three times. Warning. Fourth warning. warning. <laughs> okay. When Midrin falls to the gods, your kind will be the first to die. Gods are forbidden in the kingdom of Midrin, but now they are stirring, whispering of war. God killer Kissin sacrificed herself to vanquish the fire god Seth, who murdered her family and endangered her friends. But gods cannot be destroyed so easily, and Haseth's power strength 
threatens to reform with even greater strength and a thirst for vengeance. As tensions rise throughout the land, the kingdom needs its god killer more than ever. Still reeling from the loss of Kissin, young noble Inara and her little god of white lies, Skeddy, have set out to discover more about the true nature of their bond. As the divide between gods and humans widens, Inara and Skeddy will uncover secrets that could determine the fate of the war to come. Meanwhile, Elagast, no longer a loyal knight of King Arryn, has been... Is that Arryn? Arryn? King Aaron? I think it's Aaron, yeah. King Aaron has been tasked with killing the man he once called friend. The king vowed to eradicate all gods throughout the land, but has now entered into an unholy pact with the most dangerous of them all, and where his heart once beat, a god now burns. (coughs) Excuse me. So, I love how immediately when you walk into this next book that you're thrown right into the fray of what's happened to Kissin, what's going on right after this huge journey that they were just in in God Killer, um, and them getting back to where they first started. It comes full circle, and the emotions are immediately high. Yeah. You are never really let down from that. Like, it's such a drive, a drive, a drive. It's still... It's still very reminiscent of the way that God Killer's written in that it's a it's yeah. an epic, like it's a journey that you have to get. I was gonna say it reminded me a lot of God Killer um, because they're back on a journey to get right. to their to their ultimate goal. Yes, this at this next destination. So, but the way that she adds in more of the emotional aspect of it because now we don't know, friend, we don't. The dynamic between the characters changes significantly because of Kissin's loss, essentially, because of what they're trying to get through. There's been betrayal between their friendships throughout this whole thing. Um, They don't know who to trust. I feel like sometimes they don't even know how to trust themselves. And there's this massive, like, ball of character growth throughout the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like... It just is all boiling down one road to this, like, massive conclusion. Yeah. And I really feel like... And Hannah has dropped a lot of hints about this third book um, through her Instagram. You should definitely go and follow her. She's just plowing through. She is right. She really is. She's right in the way. I think it's it's going through these final edits and stuff like that. If I'm not mistaken, I might be. But I'm worried (laughs) because I think that some of these people that we truly have fallen in love with throughout this journey are are not going to gonna... yeah <laughs> but that we're gonna lose them essentially <laughs> and the world building and I, i'm gonna say i said it before i'll say it again if you're looking for a fantasy that's not you know 1500 pages because you know a lot of fantasy people i think people tend to shy away from because the world building is really epic and huge and it takes 150 million pages to be able to get to different plot lines in the storyline. Hannah does an amazing job of taking all that stuff and whittling it down. And these are good little chunks that are like about 300 and... 384 pages. The right. second book is 384 pages. Um, yes. And then God Killer is... Drum roll, please. A whopping 304 pages. Woo! Crikey. So, <laughs> so this is something that if you're trying to edge into fantasy and you really want to have a taste of, like, getting into a new genre, this is really going to be where you should start. I encourage you to start. Because this is really what, to me, epic fantasy is all about. Did it's, it feel short to you, though? Because it doesn't feel... It didn't feel short to me when I was no, reading it. You it know doesn't. how you have, like books that are really really easy to read and you just like full lie through them because they're only like 300 pages long right this felt like a large book to me but not in like a bad way because i think the skill is is that she gives you just enough information about the world around and that you're really invested in the characters you're taking your time to be able to get through the story and there's a lot to soak in here and she does it so skillfully like i said in what 384 pages yeah and you're not getting 
the extra bulk. It's like she took, she wrote the story with 2,000 pages, and then she took it down and gave you all the beautiful meaty bits. And somehow made it still seem like 2,000 pages. Yes, and you're still invested in the story. You're invested in all of these characters. You know, and you're feeling a range of emotions. Throughout the whole thing, I felt disgust and hatred and sadness and joy and... Yeah. It was such a wild roller coaster ride, and you get so attached to certain people, and some of the decisions that they make are so human. And me realizing that I'm holding, you know, Elo and all these other people to such high standards, then I have to back down a little bit and be like, you know what, they're just human, and they're just trying to figure this world out on their own because they have to try to navigate this life and what's happening to them because their world's getting disrupted, you know, they're past and their histories being ripped from them they're on the brink of this massive war which it's really war already but war in a different way not just bloods and swords but war of the mind war of words threat of their spiritual being i mean it's it's got everything in there that you need it's got a diverse cast of characters um it has great representation in it we're not going to be spoiling this book for you because I feel yeah. like that would be quite the injustice to just sit here Especially and... Especially since it's book two, we can't we can't be doing that. No, and I just think that you need to experience this world for yourself. And I really think that if you go in and you pick this book up, you're really going to enjoy it. I, um, a lot of people compare it to um, like a journey like The Hobbit, where they meet and they come um, into all these different adventures along the way to their end goal. Um, which is, I think, a fantastic compliment because it's such an epic, beautiful storyline. They find family. They build a troop of people together. Um, some of my favorite, my, obviously my favorite character is Elo. Right. I really like Inara because she's pretty gritty. Um, Skeddy, I just struggle with. I just struggle. I don't know. I, know. I just He's just so conflicting for me because of God of White Lies. Like, yeah. And his relationship with Inara is so rocky and so... It grows so much throughout this these two books, and you can see the balance and like the the vulnerability of humans and how if gods were this way on earth and how they influence the humans and how it's such a fragile relationship because they could make or break people. And it's no wonder, based on what these gods want and how they want these sacrifices, that people are so easily hurt because right. we're such a I don't know we're such a What's the word? I keep saying fragile, but, I mean, it's just true. We're just such a easily broken, I don't know, it's such a beautiful and poetic book, but it's also very rough and hard, and it's great. You have to pick this up. You really do. And the premise is something, like I said, that I've never picked up before. This isn't like anything I've ever read before. Yeah. Gods and men clashing and fighting each other and, you know, people trying to get back to their roots and trying to figure out a new future. And it's really great. It's it's quite the epic fantasy. And it's going to be a trilogy. You should definitely pick these two things up. We have them both here at the library. You can get them online, e-books, audio books. You can get them in physical copies here. This is an adult fantasy, so it will be in our adult section. Um, pick these up and then look out for her third book because I think she's really got something going on here. So I'm thinking it'll probably come out this year. You really think it'll come out this year? I feel like it. Dude. Uh, or maybe in January again because this one came out in January, right? These I feel like we got this book really fast. Let's see. <coughs> And I, like I said, I'm super thankful because, like, you get these and you just want to devour them immediately because you're just like, oh, my God, this is so amazing. Oh, it came out March 12th. Why did I feel like it was January? Oh, that was Anne Freistat's book, I think. Yes, we've had so many wonderful, amazing authors um, join us. And also, we've followed a bunch of different people. Um, and people are just spitting out some great stuff. It's true. You guys have to really, like dive into the book world really look there's so many cool independent authors and Mm -hmm. people who are just starting their writing or not just starting but breaking ground in their writing experience and I know that um a lot of these authors that we had have been writing for a long time and these are some of their novels that are finally 
hitting shelves and they're actually finally getting to complete these amazing stories that they live with every day that they've been experiencing for their whole lives that we're just now getting the privilege of being able to read and so keep your eyes out for stuff like that because the people these these amazing people are surprising us yes this is good stuff ladies and gentlemen this is beautiful stuff so go give our girl hannah a follow yes Um, give her all the support thank you again harper voyager and jessica lyons for sending us all the copies of sunbringer and also god killer as well and we hope you guys come into the library pick this book up yeah check it out on libby you don't want to miss it you really don't it's um it is literally one of the greatest things it really is and it's beautiful so get this fantasy do it do the thing be here and we hope you guys have a great rest of your week me too Bye. bye